Hello, beer tubers, and welcome to another beer review with me, Peter, the master of Papa. Today, joined by Brit of Enomyces, checking out a new brewery to us from Michigan in the United States that we got courtesy of Beer Dome, the website that's been sponsoring us for ages. They're back at for it. For ages. It's a long time. <laughs> we get most of our beer through Beer Dome because their selection is one of the best in Europe. Uh, so, this is from Ferndale Project, and they're based in Michigan. And Michigan is, you know, in quite, Ferndale. Yeah, quite old, already quite known for beer. Uh, especially with classic beer with the likes of Bellas and, and, and Founders. And uh, Shrams. And Mead. Mead. And there's loads of other breweries too, of yeah. course. But those are, you know, some very well-known breweries from Michigan. And yeah, these this are two quite new. double IPAs. Yeah, and these are Love and Mercy and Folding Chair. Yeah. Uh, in terms of age, we sat on these for almost three weeks before we actually got to crack them. But in the fridge. So. Yeah, it was in the fridge. They're about six months old, or six weeks <laughs> old. Uh, so they're yeah, just getting there around two months. So they're they need to be drunk now. Yeah. So should we start off with Love and Mercy or Folding Chair? And uh, Love and Mercy is eight point three, and Folding Chair is eight point nine. So Love and Mercy first. Good. Well, let's do that then. So this yep. is a double dry hop, double IPA with. Sultana, Mosaic, Matweka, and Waiti hops. Sounds like a fun combo. Yeah, some more new hops. Yep. Or just different hops. Yep. And it looks like what you'd expect from the style. Hazy, not like mm -hmm. turkey crazy hazy. No. Turkey crazy hazy. <laughs> <laughs> turkey gravy hazy, there we go. Uh, it's all the sugar. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it looks like what you'd expect. Yeah. Hazy orange. Quite hit. Still the aroma. Ooh. Very overripe and very yeah. juicy smelling. It smells and very a lot of classic. orange and it, like it yeah. Got. But I'm also getting like limey, lemony, yep. zesty brightness. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm getting that now. For some reason, at first I got much more sweetness. It's really heavy apricot for me too. Yeah. Like really, but really sweet. Mm. Like really stone fruity. Yeah. I think that's the esters. Yeah, for sure. But then definitely, as you say, like lemon lime, especially if you don't smell it like all the way down to the glass, you get much more of that pithy. I don't know if you've ever heard yes. of uh, people saying when they smell like some IPAs, like they're they're so hop saturated that they almost smell a little bit like either gasoline or rubber <laughs> tires. We talked about that once, and I can see a little bit of a gasoline, like gas type thing, like when you smell gas, feeling, just like as an astringent, slightly harsh hop mm. flavor. Yeah, just I think it's yeah. just super lightly. There. Yeah. I think to me it's maybe just like a t touch of like an earthiness, but yeah. Do you know, I was totally random. <laughs> Did you know Amar Bokus actually was one of the first breweries in Denmark to kind of try and do New England IPA? Batch 500 was a hazy, uh, it was an East Coast IPA with mostly dry hopping. I, mm. I remember loving that beer and then I'm looking to look back just because they re-released Batch 1000 too, yeah. and I just re realized. Like it's old school hops, but yeah. almost like a Eddie Topper attempt. Yeah. What the hell? And that made me think, why haven't they brought back Shadow Pictures? You remember that? Mm. The Hill Farmstead collab? That mm. was amazing. Yeah. But yeah, back to this one. Let's try it. Cheers. <laughs> Thanks for doing it. I think it's just because that gasoline you note know, is a bit old school. Yeah, That's why yeah, it's, I just... yeah, it's actually a bit dank and west coasty. Ooh, it's, it's dank. It is. And oniony. Mm. Mosaic is a really. And it actually has some bitterness. Yeah, but it's not crazy, but there's no, no, some, but, but it's, it's sweet. It's quite sweet. I yeah. Think. It has a little bit of the, dare I say, old hoppy, tea leafy, slight tea leafy hoppy flavor you found in West Coast IPAs that were imported to Europe back in the day. Just lightly, but I think it's because... I think it's, that's just the hop character, maybe. It could be... And it, you know it what, something old, like... Wood but I see that it's... Can have that. I'm pretty sure that it's definitely no, no. sweeter. Yeah. Than when it was released, absolutely. Well, it's a nice new IPA. It's not like wow, but like mm. the, my, we just talked off camera. My last flame, frame of reference for beers like this is <laughs> Monkish. Mm. That was two weeks, two and a half weeks old. So, yeah, yeah. But, but it's nice. It's, it's dry. It's also slightly grapefruity. Yeah. And I definitely pithy, oily citrus in terms of lemon and lime. To me, it's kind of like a West Coast, East Coast ish. Yeah. Because it, it has like or West Coast e vibes, but it's not like a 50 /50. Actually, maybe if you think about it, Midwest IPA done mm. Like mm. what they were known at for, like, you know, Bells and Founders making yeah. like 
too hard a day and all these like nice and fruity but not as bitter yeah, yeah, yeah. west coast ipas but not like as juicy and yeah. fruity as modern new england ipas or east coast ipas so i think yeah. it's it, it could be maybe similar to something like that because but they also had bitterness it's quite sweet up front but i actually think it dries out quite nicely with that yeah. business it doesn't like the sweetness isn't lingering at all also a little bit of pine flavor too actually yeah like it's yeah it's like a little bit of a classic in new school but it could bird. definitely be more like singy and f like yeah. fresh but that's on yeah. us yeah but yeah fun 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 stuff let's move on to folding chair so this one yeah. is yeah, I was about to say more classical, but not really. It's just because it has Centennial. But Centennial will say Ella and Nelson Sauvin. So Ella is Galaxy, the daughter of Galaxy. Yeah. Nelson we love, Mosaic we love, Centennial, it's, you know, it's also a nice classic pop. Very floral hop. Yeah, yeah, but also just classic grapefruit yeah. and, and pine yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. This one looks much more bright, or just yeah. at least a yeah. little bit. But it's the highest of the two ABV wines. Yeah. It just so. looks a bit more, you know, popping and singy. Yeah, golden yellowish. The white head was the aroma on this one. Ooh, and that is like really singing. It's much more singing and much more like zesty and kiwi. And a little bit. bit. Kiwi is all. I'm also getting like melon vibes, but I think Nelson is really just like punching through with some bright singingness, especially like grapes. Yeah. There's some note in there. But everything's a little bit muddled because it's not super fresh. It's also I the old thing. I think it's muddled, to be honest. I think a little bit like it. You, I think it. The nuances of the hops would stand out a bit more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like but I don't. I, I wouldn't describe it as muddled. But I see that it's not like lightly. Really, and, you know. Yeah, it, it doesn't pop as much as like a very very fresh IPA. It if you smell them side by side, the other one is definitely more intense on the aroma. This one. Yeah. I actually got it the other way around. Okay. I think this one is more intense because it's much more like bright and zingy than the other one. Maybe this just has more depth. I, I think this one smells more muddled and like what flat ish. Are we sure it's the same beer? Yes. I think this one is much more like pithy and like it is definitely pithy, but I, I don't think it's too bright. But it's mm. let's try it. See what it's like, tears. Cheers. Like minty, I think, and herbal, quite herbaceous, and then like limey, and it's quite different. Yeah, they and, are quite and different. Grapey. This is more mm. classic New England IPA, but this is a bit more, you know, it's Nelson centric, but with a, some other kind of fun stuff. I think the like the herbal flavor is a combo of Centennial and yeah. Nelson, because yeah. Centennial is more classic in those kind of you know flavors. Definitely, that's Centennial. and the herbal can also be Ella because you know it's I know it's a variant or it's a sis or daughter of Galaxy and Galaxy has noble hub heritage, mm. so the spicy yeah. herbal thing comes into play there too. But I think they're nice, but I'm not like wow. No, no, I'm not, nice I'm not I'm not But again, it's not too fresh. That's on us. Yeah. It would be fun to try them like really dead fresh. Yeah, because they had really great ratings when they just dropped. When they just dropped, yeah. I think this one is more drinkable and easier going because it's not as sweet, mm -hmm. even though it's stronger in ABV. But I like that it actually dries out a bit more. But I feel like the other one might have been a bit more bitter. Yeah. But I still think the positive thing is that they are still quite balanced for being, you know, mm -hmm. getting to the older side and quite close to 9%. So I'm going to do something. <laughs> half and half cuvee. Okay, but this one is definitely sweeter, like that apricot. Almost Try it. Like the cuvee smells like really pineapple-y. Almost like, you remember I talked about these custard, no, uh, pineapple bananas or something at one point we got on Madeira. Mm. Like that, like it's a numbing pineapple thing, but even more numbing. It yeah. smells a bit like that when it's cuvade. I, I like the cuvade more because I think it it just gets a bit more complexity. This this one has. I, when I go back to this one, I sense a bit more of like the alcohol. Like you, mm. you sense that it's a bit stronger underneath. So ah, you I'm should, having a hard time. You should try cuvade because when this one gets a bit of dryness. It really yeah. balances out the beer a bit nicer. Mm. I think the cuvee is actually better than oh, the yeah, beer. Oh yeah, see that it's really pineapple-y. Mm. Yeah. 
Yeah, super pineapple. Right? I think the cuvee is better than the beer of each on their own. <laughs> <laughs> it happens once in a while. Mm -hmm. That's a very good IPA cuvee. Yeah. Because you get a lot of brightness, but also like some overripe tones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's one of the things like monkey's nails. They're very bright, but they also have underlying overripeness that, mm. and all the, like, the juicy profile you want. But yeah. it's just not too much. That's why I love Monkey so much. It's just a perfect combo of hop centric and yeast centric. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where it's not just one or the other. Like a lot of people talk about with like ultra soft, estuary beers like, you know, Treehouse or really hop centric ones like some of the. I love that. Trillium. Yeah, Trillium or Other Half to some extent, but they're also, hmm. as far as I've been told, I haven't drunk Other Half beer in a long time. But, and I know we have a drop of Other Half coming soon in Europe. It's, yeah. it's nuts. Yeah, I won't we buy have too much it. It's just no. hops. No. So. We have so much beer already. So. Yeah. Uh, but I'll go, I think I'll kind of tie them. You, you I was thinking straight 90 on both. Yeah, I was Maybe thinking like 90, 90, oh, I'm thinking 90, 91 on both. I think they're pretty good IPAs. Uh, I would say 91 on the Cuvée and then like around between 88 and a 90. Uh, I had a hard time exactly, no, straight 90 because they're very nice IPAs. Mm. So yeah, straight 90 on both, 91 yeah. on the Cuvée. It's, like just around that, I can't really. Yeah, I think when they're dead fresh, they're probably like maybe not ninety five plus, but right on the edge. Mm. I, I think. Yeah. At least I, I, I've like seen people, uh, at least some of the untapped friends I have that tasted them some weeks ago, give them very high grades. So. What do you think, Major Macros behind the camera? I think they're good, uh, but I agree with Brit. Yeah, like. Grade wise. Yeah. 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 Which one's your favorite? Is the Kuwait or? One of the other. Uh, I think I prefer folding chair slightly over the cuvee. Yeah. Okay. I think I like the flavor profile of that one also a bit more. Yeah. But, but it's a bit stronger. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's not as nice to drink in the long run. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I prefer the cuvee just more because it yeah. just. I like that this has a little bit of sweetness because I feel like oh, yeah, that's the cuvee is, is very nice. Yeah. But uh, yeah. So hey, we got to try some Ferndale product. So if you guys had a chance to try either folding chair or. Love and mercy. There's no way thought of them. Thanks a ton to Beardom for the beers. You guys rule. And as always, remember to comment, subscribe, check out the Facebook fan page, and Twitter, and Instagram. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And ring the bell for future notifications about videos. We're going to say cheers. Cheers. And the Kuwait. Yeah. And see you guys in another beer review.